Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Let's talk about the gears I use for my YouTube videos. I can't do nothing without my camera, so let me start with my camera journey. Like many, I created my first YouTube video with a camera from the iPhone 6. But quickly, I was limited by the capability of my phone camera. And because I was influenced by Casey Neistat, I got myself a Canon G7X Mark II. That's a pretty significant upgrade, but that didn't last long because at that time, I know nothing about camera. And what I truly wanted was a camera with an interchangeable lens. So a few months later, I managed to sell the Canon camera away and got myself a Sony A6300. And by the way, that's the same camera I used to date. It has been with me for 4 years and it's good enough for what I do here. When it comes to lens, I stick with the standard kit lens with the range 16 to 50, which is for wide angle and basic zoom. Although not telephoto enough, but accompanied with the clear image zoom, that's good enough for me. My second lens is my favorite portrait lens. That's a 35mm f1.8. That's the prime lens I use for most of my b-roll shots and it's all because of the beautiful bokeh. And I love it because it's one of the best when it comes to a low light environment. I have a set of macro attachment from Maker. That's used when I want to film something dramatic and bring you close to the subject. But when it comes to macro, the only issue is it requires tons of light in order for me to have a crispy image. I have a 2-in-1 filter with durable ND and circular polarizer and it's from KNF Concept. It's the best when I'm shooting something bright and it's mostly used outdoor. Just like the sunglasses, the purpose of this is to prevent overexposure of the image. Or when I'm shooting time lapse where I have to crank the shutter speed to achieve a blurry movement effect. Not to mention, the polarizer is there to remove the glare and reflection from anything reflective. By the way, I got it in the largest lens size, 72mm, because I can use this to fit it to any lens, either the prime lens, kit lens, or if I need a bigger lens in the future. All I need is to have a step down ring, instead of buying the filter in different size, that will cost a lot. I have to say, it makes my kit lens extremely professional, or maybe too overkill, it looks like a diving camera. Also, all my lenses are covered with UV filters. I know that's completely redundant when it comes to UV and there's not much difference with or without but they are there to act as a lens protector. I mean, I'm pretty rough with my equipment so this is the best I can do to prevent them from getting all worn out. Next would be my external monitor. If you know a little bit about the A6300, the display screen on the back can't be flipped to the front. And the only way I can see what I'm filming is with an external monitor. That's the Viltrox DC50. A basic monitor with no touchscreen and the color is not perfect too. But it doesn't really matter, I just need something affordable for the composition of my frame. So I'll use it to film my talking kit which is my a roll. Or when the camera is mounted so high I can't see how it looks. The monitor and the extra cable is useful for that. For the audio, I have a shotgun mic from Techstar. So whatever environmental sound or voiceover are all done by this. A side note, in order for me to have my monitor and my mic mounted on the camera at the same time, I got myself a microphone mount which is mounted on the bottom of the camera. Not the easiest thing to use. Sometimes I'll use it for my Aero mic as well by attaching it to a tripod with a pop filter on. Other times I'll use the Boya Lavalier. I'll say the shotgun mic is definitely clearer and crispier when it comes to sound but I'll only use the Boya Lavalier when I find this thing too distracting in the frame. Indeed, I believe that audio is important when it comes to video. I wouldn't want to spend so much on perfecting my audio by upgrading to a professional equipment. Also, I believe that audio is only as good as the environment, meaning soundproofing is an important step when it comes to audio because any fan sound or air cool makes a big difference. So let me bring you along to my voiceover setup. As mentioned, the Techstar shotgun mic is my voiceover mic and it's plugged in straight to my PC recorded in Adobe Audition. The Techstar mic is not the best when it comes to close up voiceover. So it's important to have this pop filter so you can remove plosive sounds for example, take donkey bay. And when it comes to soundproofing, my mic is rested on a growth mid felt mat. I have two wavy sponge in front of me. They are actually from a delivery box which I kept them for this purpose. I have to cover the area with my blanket. All of this fabric, felt and sponge are there to absorb the echo and block off unnecessary noise. Next will be my talking head. 
What you always see is a clean room with minimal background. But the truth is, it's always in a mess. Let me show you. First, I'll use my blanket as a soundproofing mat. I'll draw the curtain from the right, another blanket on the left. Same thing, all of these are done to prevent echo. Since we are here, let's talk about lighting. For the longest time, I've been using my window light as a key light. But I always know it's not efficient because I can only film during the day. And it kind of bothers me when I have no autonomy over the temperature and brightness since it changes as it wishes. Because of that, I got a Viltrox LED light where I have control over the brightness and temperature. But I feel the light is kind of harsh, so I use the whiteboard as a reflector to bounce the light to my face. That softens everything, but I realize I still need to depend the window light. So I had been filming during the daytime for a long while until I purchased this Godox SL60W, an extremely powerful light. So I paired it with a parabolic softbox, which is overkill for my room. I didn't expect it to be so humongous in my room, and it takes out a lot of space, but I just love how soft the light is, so it's here to stay. And only when I'm filming my talking head, then I'll have another layer of fabric grid. That's to narrow the beam spread and prevent the light from spilling to the side because I just want it to shine on me and not the background. So normally, the light will be located 20 to 30 degree on my left and I'll still use the window as my fill light. For my back, I'll use a random lamp or the LED to light up the wall. Other boring but essential tools are the stands and tripods. My camera tripod was a Christmas gift and it's from Zomei. After using it for so long, it has been falling apart lately, which is the worst thing that can happen because a tripod is something I'm not willing to spend my money on since it doesn't really improve my quality of my production directly. So I'll make do with what I have at this moment until it's completely unusable. Other than that, I also have a phony Gorilla Pod which is flimsy. So the only time I use it is for low angle shots when I need my camera to be on the floor. I also have standard tripod stand for the light and also a C stand for all my overhead shots. Of course, I have many different batteries for different gears. And when it comes to post-edit, I'm in the Adobe ecosystem. So Premiere Pro is a must, Photoshop for random edits and thumbnail, and audition for audio. A quick message from our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. Regardless the tools and gears you have, we need a space for us to express our ideas and creativity. Squarespace is built to help you, whether it's a blog, portfolio or an e-commerce store. They are a one-stop service that provides tools like email marketing, audience analytics, domains, and also award-winning templates that are needed to complement your creation. So if you are looking to build a website, go to squarespace.com slash ckspace to get your free trial running. When it's ready to launch, use the code ckspace to get your 10% off your first purchase. So that sums up my filming gear. I've been using the bare minimum and the things I already have for a long time before I slowly improve the quality of my production. If you want to start creating your video, I truly believe that it's important to forget about perfection or wanting the highest quality for your first try. Instead, start focusing on the skills that will make your video interesting and also the story and message you want to tell. So that's about it and that's all I want to say this time. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you guys again on the next one.